Have you ever read those periodic disclosures received from your automobile collision insurance carrier? The notifications that illuminate things like etc etc or some such verbiage. Contracts which cover payments related to losses be it the use or functionality of a vehicle or otherwise, have limitations. I know, I know, I can already hear it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a word from our sales prevention department. You aren't being asked to step into a street fight with a busted hand, leading with your chin, while facing someone wielding a lead pipe here, but as the expression goes, The following is by no means intended to represent an exhaustive list of terms or conditions, but rather is used to serve as a representative sampling of possible limitations for illustrative purposes only. Some of the examples may be applicable to specific contract providers only. Additionally, there may be other limitations which aren't as obvious. For example, have you ever wondered why with many menu systems, you're required to input the MSRP slash retail price of the vehicle purchase you are processing. Related to many VSCs, the lifetime claims history payout is not to exceed this value. And if it's a lifetime VSC contract, a limitation may be that the payment for repair at the time of loss is not to exceed the vehicle's current retail value. In other words, 15 years from now, if the engine lets go and it's going to cost $10,000 to repair slash replace, but the vehicle itself is only worth $3,500, a check might be issued in the amount of $3,500 to be paid toward repairs and no further claims will be paid. Related to many guaranteed asset protection policies, the policy will not pay for shortages left unpaid by the collision insurance carrier due to excess wear and tear considerations. In other words, if the insurance company has determined that the vehicle in question, which has been deemed a total loss, has well beyond average miles or has prior damage, for example, then they may pay less than what the fair market value would be before these considerations are taken into account. The guaranteed asset protection carrier is likely not going to cover this additional deficiency. The gap coverage is there to pay into the difference between what the insurance company pays and the payoff with limitations. No coverage carrier could possibly insure against all unforeseen variables and they must know in advance what their possible liability exposures are in order to quantify their risk as always. Knowing our product contracts front to back is critically important so that we are able to accurately represent what is covered, for how long, and speak authoritatively without risk 
of misrepresentation of the facts. Think about it. Good luck and good selling.